Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video, we're going to get back into MapKit for our application by adding a new feature. We'll explore how we can search for surrounding locations using a natural language search, and then add them to any other place marks we may have already added for our particular location. Now, before we start, I want to mention that in all of my videos in the description, I have a table of contents that are linked to specific locations in the video. So if you just want to jump to a specific location, go ahead and do that. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If you're working along with me, you can continue on from the source code that you completed in the last video. However, if you're just jumping in here and you want to work along, you can download the completed project from that last video. Make sure you download from the branch of video 3. You can see that I've already started a new branch now for this video, and the completed source code for this video will be in that branch. Links to both are in the description. Well, now that we can create multiple destinations and set the regions, we want to implement a way to search for markers on our different locations and then eventually persist them to our database. The Maps API gives us the ability to form a natural language search that will search for what we are looking for within a specific region, normally our visible region. I want to use this in our destination locations map view as well as on our trips map view, which we'll be working on in a future video. When I'm at one of these views, I want to be able to search for some attractions, coffee shops, shopping, gas stations, etc., all of which can be accomplished via the natural language query, and then add those place markers to my view alongside ones that I've already selected for that destination. Well, the way I'm going to handle this search is to temporarily add all search results to my empty place marks table in our database, but leave the destination as nil. And this will allow me to easily delete them all when I move away from the view, and they will allow me to present them on top of my map in a different color. Since I'm going to be using this in two different views, I want to create a map manager service where I can create some static functions that I can call from either view. So let's start by creating a new folder, and I'm going to call it services. Inside there, I'll create a new file, not a Swift UI file, and I'm going to call it Map Manager. When the file's created, change the import to Map Kit and add another one for Swift data. And then create an enum called Map Manager. And I'm using an enum instead of a struct or a class or a singleton simply because I want to use it as a namespace and I just want to create three static functions in here. The first of two I will create right now. When we search, we need to know the search string, the visible region, and since we'll be using Swift data to insert what we find, we'll need to know what the model context is. But we're not in a view, and we can't use the environment variable here to retrieve it. So I'll need to fetch that from the view so that when we call our functions, we'll have to pass it along to the function as an argument. So let's create that function now, and it's a static function that I'll call search places with those three parameters. First will be a model context of type model context, and I'm using that underscore at the beginning so that the caller doesn't have to use the label for the argument. In the second, we'll call it search text, and it's going to be a string. And then the third will be our visible region which is an optional MK coordinate region. Now this function is going to make an asynchronous call, so it has to be marked as async. So now within the body of the function, we'll first create a request, and that's an MK local search request function. We'll specify that the request natural language query property will be the search text. And then we can use an if let to unwrap the visible region and assign it to the request region. 
I'm going to create a property called search items that will be an optional response from the search request. And this can be done by using an optional try and a wait for the MK local search using the request and then perform the start function. We can then map the search items, map items into an array called results. And since it's optional, we don't want it to be optional, we'll assign an empty array using nil coalescing. Now, if you option click on results, you'll see that it's an array of map item, which we can drill down on and we see here that it contains what's called a place mark. So what I'd like to do is use a for each loop on the array, and then I'm going to create an empty place mark from the iterator that's generated. So I'm going to use the shorthand notation here and use $0 instead of assigning a variable for this MK map item to access its place mark property. So let's create an empty place mark then using the initializer. And I'll use a control M to separate each argument onto its own line. And then for the name, we can use that $0, the iterator's place mark, dot name. But it's optional, so we can no coalesce that to an empty string. For the address, there is no address property of place mark but we can find it in the title property. Go we'll figure that. And it too is optional, so we'll need to provide an empty string. To find the latitude, we'll need to access the place marks coordinates and then choose the latitude. And we do a similar thing for the longitude. And then once we have the empty place mark, we can use that passed in model context that we received in the function to insert that empty place mark into our database and Swift Data will automatically save it. Well, there's one more thing that we'll need to do. This function will be updating our UI by adding place marks, so it must be run on the main thread, so we'll need to decorate it with an at main actor. Before we leave this service for now, though, I want to create one more function. When we perform a new search, or when our view disappears, we want to be able to remove any search results that we have not added to a specific location. We'll be getting to that in the next video. So let's create a new static property called remove search results. That, like the search places function, needs to have the model context as a parameter. To remove all of those not location place marks, all we have to do is find the ones where the destination is nil. And we can do this in Swift data by using a predicate macro. So our search predicate will be equal to the predicate for place marks, where using $0, the destination is equal to nil. Those will just be the search one. And then we can use an optional try to call the model context delete function to delete all items in the model empty place mark dot self where that search predicate holds. And we'll also want to make sure that if we are doing sequential searches on our view without moving away from the view, each time we perform a new search, the previous search results are removed. So as the first line before we form our request, we'll call this function as well in that first function. Well, now that we have our functions created, we can access them from our destination locations map view. So for the search text field, we'll need a state property for that. So we'll create that as search text and initialize that as an empty string. But I'm also going to add a focus state as well, so that I can use it to dismiss the keyboard when I tap on a button. So let's create that focus state as search field focus, and we'll make it a Boolean. Now, where to place the search field? Well, I'm going to choose to put it at the bottom safe area inset. So after the map view, create a safe area inset with the edge being bottom. 
Inside there, create an H stack and add some padding all around. As the first element in the H stack, create a text field with the title key search followed by three dots. And for the text property, bind it to the search text state property. Then set the text field style to rounded border. And here we can set the focus to the bound search field focus. So that this means when we tap into this field, the search field focus will be set to true and the keyboard will appear. So to dismiss the keyboard, we can create an overlay button that appears when the field is focused. And when tapped, dismiss the keyboard by setting the focus state back to false. So create an overlay with an alignment of trailing. Then within the body, we can see if the search field focus is true, we'll create a button. And we'll use a label with the system name mark.circle.fill. And I'm going to apply an offset where x is equal to minus 5 to move it in from the right. Now, initially, because this search field doesn't have a focus, there's no button. But when I tap into the field, the button appears. To make it lose focus when we tap on the button, we'll need to set the search text back to an empty string and then set the search field focus to false. That way, when the keyboard is presented, like you have in the simulator or on the device, it'll be dismissed. Now, attached to this text field, we can apply an onSubmit method. In this method, we want to call our Map Manager's search places function. But since it's an asynchronous function, we'll need to create a task unit of work. Well, we're going to need to pass the model context to that particular function but we don't have that yet. So at the top of the view, let's get it from the environment, creating an environment variable for the key path model context, and we'll assign that to our own property called model context. And then back within that task, we can await the results of calling the manager search places function. And again, I'm going to use Control M to separate the arguments onto their own lines. And then we can pass in our model context and the search text and the visible regions for the corresponding arguments. After the search has been completed and returned, we can clear the search text by setting it to an empty string. Now, how do we go about displaying those found place marks once we've searched? Well, let's create a Swift data query to fetch all of those empty place marks that have been added that have no destination. So at the top of the view, create that query, but add a filter to the query using the predicate macro. And that predicate will be based on the empty place marks. And then the condition is when our iterator $0's destination is equal to nil. And we can set that to a variable that we'll call search place marks, which is an array of empty place marks. Well, let's create another computer property then that'll combine both our destination place marks and this search set of place marks. So we'll call this private property list place marks. That's an array of empty place mark. And it's just that, the sum of search place marks and destination. Now we'll need to change the list to iterate through the list place marks instead. We do want to distinguish between the two of those sets though. So we only want to present that existing set if the place marks destination is not nil, meaning that we've already assigned a location. If it is nil then, in the else for this, we can just use a generic 
marker using the placemark name as the title key and the placemark coordinates computed property for the coordinate. If we tap into that field now and try to do a search though, our preview crashes. And that's because we added the query back to this view and we'll want to have the preview work for us. We'll need to apply the model container for the destination.preview. So let's test this now and search for something like attractions. This presents all of those attractions to the view. If I search again for, say, coffee shops, the existing set disappears and our new set appears. I do, though, want to be able to clear all of those red marks if I don't even do another search. So I'm going to do one more thing before we complete this video, and that's to create a clear button. So that's why I created an H stack to display that text field. As the second element, I'm going to create a second view that's a button that only appears if the search marks array is not empty. If it's not empty, then I'm going to create a button with using a label that is an image with the system name map pin dot slash dot circle dot fill. And I'll set the image scale to large. And then for the button itself, I'm going to apply a foreground style of white, add some padding of eight, set the background to red, and then apply a clip shape of circle. So we can test this out now. Initially, that button is not appearing, but as soon as we complete a search, you'll see that the button appears. To clear the search place marks, we'll need to provide a call to the map manager's remove search results function in the action and pass in that model context. Now, whenever we perform a search, the search marks are all displayed and then tapping on the button will remove them. One last thing, and I alluded to this earlier, when the view disappears, we want to remove any place marks so that they don't get presented in our first view that we'll be working on soon. So create an on disappear block. And within here, we'll call the map managers remove search results function, passing in that model context. And while we're at it, thinking ahead that we might be having a search in our first view and then go directly to this view. So we'll want to make sure that when this view gets appeared, we'll remove any place marks that that previous view may have already had. So within the on appear block, let's make another call to that function. In the next video, we'll learn how we can present a modal sheet displaying information about the place mark and add it to our destinations list. It'll also give us the ability to do a look around if one's available. We'll also learn how we can, once a place mark has been added to a location, how to delete it, and possibly edit the name and address. If you're enjoying this series, please give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. And if this series is not yet completed, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you're notified when new videos are available. Otherwise, continue on with the series by checking out the next one in the playlist.